Hi everyone, it's Cara. I'm from To Engage Them All. I'm starting to do a little video series on resources to teach the elections in your classroom. It's my favorite time of year. It's kind of like Christmas for social studies teachers. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you video number one where we're going to talk about using the website 538, which is just amazing. Thank you. Hey everyone, again, this is Cara from To Engage Them All. And seriously, election season is like Christmas for teachers, uh, social studies teachers. I get just ridiculously excited every four years. So um, I was going to write a bunch of blog posts, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to kind of show some people some resources so you guys can navigate it through yourselves. Most of my resources would probably be good for through 8th grade, maybe through 10th grade. So definitely try them out before you use them in the classroom. So I'm going to show you one that I did not use last time and I'm definitely, definitely going to use. So we're going to be working with a website today called 538. So first of all, 538 is the creation of this genius right here. His name is Nate Silver. And Nate Silver is a statistician. Uh, specifically, he was a statistician for ESPN. That was his thing, looking at baseball player stats, making predictions. Um, and so in 2008, he actually decided to try to make a prediction about the uh, McCain-Obama election. And he went through state by state and made a predictability factor based upon the percentage of winning all the electoral votes. And from there, he made a prediction of the percent that you would need, the per, um, basically what your percent chance was to win the election. In 2008, he was able to guess 49 out of, not guess, I'm sorry, he used his stats to do this. It's not guessing. That's the whole cool thing about it. He, used, uh, he guessed 49 out of the 50 states, and in 2012, with Romney and Obama, he was able to, to successfully predict 50 out of the 50 states. So first of all, if you have a math teacher around, this is an awesome thing to join in on them. Um, we'll ask them to do something cooperatively because this is all about stats and predictability and probability and this is not about emotion in the least bit. So um, so it's called his website that he uses now. He used to um, be off. So it, used, it started off at ESPN and then it was on the Huffington Post. Now he has his own website called 538. And you're going to see here, this was his 2012. His prediction is on the left-hand side, and the way the election went is on the right-hand side. And obviously, his things that are um, uh, a little bit lighter mean that he wasn't sure about them, but he thought they were going to go blue, and in the end, they did. So he, it was pretty amazing that he was spot on. So I'm going to now open it up to the website. And so basically, you literally, I mean, if you just go to your bar and you type in 538, it is going to be your first one right here, 538, Nate Silver's 538. So you're going to click there, and you're going to get your front page. So if you look up here, he does politics, sports, science and health, economics, culture. Um, he actually, like, can Katie Ledecky break the eight-minute barrier? He literally uses um, he uses stats to be able to make predictions on many things in our lives. So if you go over here, he made it nice and easy for the interactives, the 2016 election forecast. If you click over here, you get this front page. So right now, his prediction is that Hillary Clinton has an 88.8% .8 chance of winning this election, and Donald Trump has an 11.1%. So this is different than a lot of the um, percentages that we present our kids. We'll say that Hillary has, and you'll see down here, you'll see, you know, Hillary is leading at 49% of the popular vote, and Donald Trump has 41% of the uh, popular vote. And let's give a shout out to Mr. Gary Johnson, because he actually has been gaining ground. Gary Johnson has an 8% 3.6% of the popular vote. He's the libertarian. So we usually talk about these numbers with our kids. He's actually talking about the percent chance they have at winning the election. So it's a different way of looking at it. So if you scan through, you can then go state by state. So I'm here in Massachusetts. 
So Hillary has a 99.4% 99 chance of winning Massachusetts. Um, Georgia was a big swing state, and it's still, it's starting Clinton 52.2, Trump 47.8. And you can talk with the kids about the different shades of color. Your darker blue is going to be your 99% chance from California. Your lighter blue is going to be a closer race. So the different shades of color. So um, this is awesome. Over here, you have your states to watch. You might explain to your kids that these could be called um, swing states. Uh, you might dis decide to use the term battleground state. That's what I tend to use is battleground state. And so you can do a quick little jump here. So, you know, we're here in Massachusetts. We talk about New Hampshire a lot. So I can then jump over to New Hampshire. New Hampshire right now, we've got popular 49 to 40. And then using stats, we have an 82% chance that Clinton is going to win New Hampshire and 178 that Trump is going to win. This is at this point in time. If you notice, it's right here. It's almost September over through November. So right now, this is how we're figuring out these numbers. So then you might talk to the kids about why or how do you figure out these numbers. So Nate Silver has pulled some of his favorite um, and, and bigger pollsters, and he's actually gone through and graded them. So this is another great thing for kids to look at. He grades them, if you look up here, he's graded them based upon how big a sample size they are. That's really awesome for the kids to know. Um, also, how recently it was co conducted, so how close to, to now it is. Historical accuracy. If I look at somebody like the University of New Hampshire, which is a huge one up here, um, have, have they done a nice job of being close in their predictions? And then the methodology of the polling firm. What types of ways are they pulling their numbers? Is it... Are they calling landlines? Are they calling cell phones? Are they going out and actually talking to people at a mall? Are they talking to people at a NASCAR rally? Where, where and how are they getting their information? So this is another great thing for kids to look at. And you can actually, you know, pull more polls down. And he grades them base. So you could also say to the kids, we're only going to take A's and look at them. And that is, and so if you look at, you know, A minus, he's, we got Clinton by 17 right here. Um, we have this one. This is a new one. It has Trump by one. It's new. He hasn't given him a grade yet. So we're going to have to stay tuned and look at that. Down here, he gives even more information. So likely voters, uh, th third parties taken out, trend lines, house effects. Uh, and then he goes down here and he tells you, he gives you a lot of information about how this forecast works. He actually goes through, if you want to look, he talks about his major themes and findings. Think probabilistically, state polls, national polls, errors are correlate. This is seriously, I was showing this to my husband who's a math teacher. This is an awesome way to bring math and social studies together. So uh, another thing that I love about this is down, I want to go back to here, sorry. Okay, there we go. Another thing I love down here, we also have this information presented in a different way. So we actually have the expected margin of victory and we have, you know, blue being your Democrats, red being your Republicans, showing you in which way are we leaning. And again, those are your battleground states. So right down here, this is my favorite part of the entire website. So back up to the top for a second. First, your kids are going to have to have a decent grasp of the Electoral College to understand. Uh, it can be very hard for kids to understand popular vote versus electoral college, but that's going to really help with this. So when I'm looking at this map, now we have a lot more blue in areas than we tend to have. North Carolina tends to be a little bit red. Florida tends to be a little bit more red. It's sometimes really hard for the kids to understand why we have all this red in the middle and not nearly as many blues but how did Barack Obama win? Um, when we look at both the 2008 and 2012 Electoral College, 
this is the easiest way to explain. And so for each one of these, the little, like the little geometric figures there, that is worth one electoral vote. Electoral vote is worth population. They're able to see through this map that there's a lot more blue. And this helps them start to understand how popular vote affects electoral college vote and why we can have so many red states, but those red states might only have a three little red dots on this or three little red dots here. But Texas has tons and California has tons. So this, so this gives you a really great idea of what the voting really looks like. And I think it helps kids learn a lot better. We can scroll down. They have some other great different things. This graph shows things that are dark in the blue or Hillary, dark in the red or Trump. And then it shows you the path. This is the 270, which is the number of votes you need to get. Uh, we've got some how much each state matters. It's a probability that a state will provide the decisive vote, which is kind of cool. So we're saying that basically like Florida has a 15% chance of being like the vote that actually tips somebody over. Um, what to expect from the Electoral College. Uh, nice one right here of who's winning the popular vote. This gives you kind of an index feel. I love this. This is a fun one to look at. Um, the crazy and not so crazy scenarios. So like right now, Mr. Silver, like electoral college deadlock. So basically no candidate gets 270 votes. Right now, Mr. Silver is saying there's a 0.3% chance of that. A recount, we're at almost a 3% chance. Uh, Clinton wins popular vote. He's saying right now Hillary's a 90.7 and Donald is a 9.3. Clinton wins popular vote but loses electoral college. That would be a nod back to Mr. Gore. And we got a 2.5% chance. That, and it goes on. It's, it's really cool to kind of look at the different percentages um, down here, which is really cool. So, um, again... <laughs> I'm engaging them off social studies and content literacy. This is first one of my first of resources that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be making some stuff and putting it for free out there for you to use with this. Seriously, this is a great website for kids to use. Um, I can really see it being really easy in the classroom for you to be able to explain some topics. Uh, leave me some information. Let me know if this was good for you. Thanks a lot.